Let's read our text for this evening. Romans 8, verses 15 and 16. Romans 8, 15 and 16. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. The subject of Romans 5 verses 15 and 16 is assurance. Now the word assurance is not found in the text, but the reality of assurance most definitely is. For now, I ask you to take this on trust, as it were. I'll prove it to you later in the sermon. We need to understand right at the outset that this biblical truth of assurance is vital. It's vital for you, personally, as a child of God. You need to know what assurance is. You need to know the way in which it is enjoyed so that you can be confident that you belong to your faithful Savior and so enjoy the comfort of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's important. And only then, with this certain knowledge of belonging to Christ, only then are you able to pray. Only then can you do good works out of gratitude. Only then can you look forward to the return of Jesus Christ. To put it negatively, without assurance of your personal salvation, you are without hope and unable to do anything good. That's how serious it is. Lose that and you're like a ship without a rudder, tossed to and fro. This being the importance of assurance for each individual, it's vital also for the life of the church corporately. Imagine the mess that we would be in here if most or many of the congregation doubted their salvation. If all but a few of the older people, and maybe not only, not even them, or all of them, if all but a few of the older people were unsure if they were really converted at all, and so most of the members of the church then abstain from the Lord's Supper, if that were the case, we would have to engage in church discipline, wide-scale church discipline, because of gross disobedience to an important command of Jesus Christ, take, eat, and drink ye all of it in remembrance of me, his personal command to all believers to partake of the Lord's Supper. A command like the Ten Commandments, which must be kept. And then too, church discipline because of the unbelief of our confession in the very first Lord's Day of our Heidelberg Catechism. What is your only comfort in life and death? Answer, my only comfort in life and death is that I am not my own, but I belong to my faithful Savior Jesus Christ. And the lack of assurance means that you don't believe the very first lines of your own confession. And so I say, think of the mess. How would you start disciplining a church? Wisely, graciously. But how would you start disciplining a church if unbelief had gotten to such a dire stage? And so for healthy believers and a prosperous congregation, the biblical and reformed truth of assurance must be confessed <coughs> and known. This is, of course, what we want here in this congregation more and more. A healthy, confident assurance of salvation for one and all. And this is God's will and the church council's will for all of Christ's covenant people here. Consider then the believer's assurance of sonship. 
The believer's assurance of sonship. First, the nature of assurance. Second, the author of assurance. And third, the way of assurance. The believer's assurance of sonship. The nature of it, the author of it, and the way of it. Now, in general, assurance here we have something of a definition, at the very least a working definition. Assurance is the personal certainty of the believer that all the promises of the gospel are his or hers. Personal certitude that all the promises of the gospel are mine. That's what it is to be assured. So assurance is not merely confidence that Jesus is the only saviour of sinners, it's assurance that Jesus is my Savior. Without that former statement, the first means nothing to you. Assurance is not merely believing that God forgives and sanctifies and glorifies His people. Assurance is the certainty that God forgives, sanctifies, and will glorify me. You need that me in there, or it's all to no avail for you. <coughs> Assurance, therefore, concerns not only the present. Assurance concerns the past. Assurance confesses that Jesus died on the cross for his church, me included. Assurance is sure that the triune God not only chose his people before the foundation of the word, the world, but that I personally am one of the elect. You need to know that. Assurance also confesses certainty, not only with regard to the present and the past, but as regards the future. Assurance is an expansive, wide-ranging sort of thing. Assurance says Jehovah not only preserves all his sheep, but he will keep me so that I will not and cannot be lost. Assurance says not only will all the saints be glorified in the world to come, in both body and soul, but that means me too. And this is the triumphant confession of assurance. God has always loved me. God loves me right now. And he will always love me in Jesus Christ no matter what. Even if. I wickedly sin against God and commit adultery. Though I never want to do that, but even then, to take an extreme example, God's grace will certainly bring those who are elect to conversion. And God loves us just as much when we sin as when we're faithful. His love is unconditional according to his own sovereign will. Because we're his common friends. We're bound to him everlastingly with the cords of mercy and faithfulness. This is what we mean by assurance. The question is do you have assurance? You should. You should. Maybe not as strong as it should be or as strong as you'd like, but every believer does know this. Every believer does know this. Even if it's only a small beginning of the assurance, because the believer believes, has faith by definition, and faith is assurance and knowledge, he knows and is assured of the gospel truth's application to him or her personally. In our text, assurance is viewed from the perspective of the assurance of sonship. The assurance of sonship. Verse 15 refers to the spirit of adoption. And adoption is a legal act whereby God makes us his sons and daughters. 